they got it for a really, really good price, which should make you question everything. It disappeared from Seattle's Lake Samash. I love a blurb on the back. We get seven, seven friends, words, one body, six experts. Can you solve the crime before they do? If we were villains in Riley's sake, guys, come on. You know I'm all over this one. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to another round of What's New. So we are talking about what is new in September, which is basically what is the long list of books that Audrey can't wait to get her hands on. So I am very excited to once again be partnering with Book of the Month on today's video and I am also very excited that Book of the Month has put one of my most anticipated thrillers of the year into my hands a little bit early. So more on this in a minute, but first let's talk about all of the reasons I am obsessed with Book of the Month. So not only do I love that I can get my hands on a brand new hardcover or an early release hardcover for the best price in town, but I get to choose from a curated selection of books across genres. They have introduced me to some new and emerging authors, which is a huge focus of theirs, and have also sprinkled in some of my favorites. And now you guys can get your first book for only $9.99 using the code CIDER. So I'm going to include a link to Book of the Month down below, the code, all of the details that you guys need to know, and also you guys need to know that they have recently launched a curated collection of audiobooks. So now you have the choice of if you want your monthly selection as an audiobook or as a physical book, which is just so cool. You guys know I am a mega audiobook listener as well, and I love that this is now an option for us. So definitely check out all of the information down below. Shipping is always free. They have an incredible app. They have a podcast called Virtual Book Tour, which I absolutely love. Just go check them out, you guys. You won't be sorry. And now let's talk about the two books that I picked this month, which I'm so super excited about. So the first book I picked is Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. You guys, I am like you. I am waiting for the list to come out to see what the books are going to be. I am checking out the hints the Book of the Month puts out on their Instagram page. And when I saw that Bright Young Women was one of the selections, I legit screamed. I'm not even kidding. I have been waiting for this book since I heard about it and now I have it in my hands and I'm so excited about it. So this is a serial killer book that is inspired by the true events of Ted Bundy and about the sorority house massacre in Tallahassee and then a disappearance that happened four years earlier and we have two women who come together to demand answers. I love books about strong women. I love a dark and messed up thriller. I do have a bit of an affection for some serial killer stories so I am so excited about this. This is 100% next up on my reading list so stay tuned for more on that. And then the next book I got is a new to me author. This is Lisa M. Matlin and this is called The Stranger Upstairs. So I love discovering new authors. This is also a deep dark thriller you guys. So we have a woman who buys a murder house for a really good price and of course there's going to be something wrong with it. So you know I love exploring new authors. I love exploring some dark and messed up stories which is why I had to pick both of these books for the month. So I'm very excited about it and I love to get my hands on them a little bit early. So again, you guys, you also can get your hands on these books for only $9.99 using the code CIDER. Info is all down below. Shipping is always free. You guys, this is a no brainer. You're gonna find something that you love there the same way that I have. So thank you again so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video, for being my partner in this. And I'm very excited about these two new releases and I'm excited about a whole bunch more. So let's talk about what else is coming out in September. And I'm also gonna dive in a bit deeper on both of these books. So keep watching. As always, I will have all the pub date information listed down below as of the time of my filming. <laughs> I know it's still a little bit of a sliding scale, but the first book I have starting on September 5th is Reykjavik. And this is by Ragnar Jonasson and Katrine Jacobsdotter. I feel like I'm probably not saying that right, so I'm so, so sorry. And this was translated by Victoria Cribb. So if you guys have been around for a little bit, you know I have read several of Ragnar Jonasson's books and I'm a huge fan and this is a standalone, but I'm like, he would be good to get back into for series September. But anyway, this is a standalone book. So in this one, it is pitched as Iceland's most infamous unsolved case. So in 1956, we have a girl named Lara. She was 14 years old and she decided to spend a summer working for a couple on the small island of Vidi, just off the coast of Reykjavik. And she then disappears without a trace. Case was never solved. She was never found and hence, the most famous unsolved mystery. And then in present day, it is the 200th anniversary of the city. And we have a journalist who begins his own investigation into what happened to Lara. And as you can imagine, 
somebody doesn't want this case to be solved and there's a reason it stayed a mystery for as long as it has. So you are giving me writer vibes with the journalist doing some investigation, some true crime-ish spin to it. I very much enjoy his writing. I'm not familiar with his co-author on this but I do have the e-arc from Minotaur which I'm very excited about and I'm excited to read it so stay tuned for this but I do enjoy his characters, Iceland Noir, just very dark, <laughs> messed up as I enjoy. So anyway, top of my list, first one out for this month. The next book I have is a YA thriller debut, and this is called Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Munoz. And this is pitched as Knives Out meets One of Us is Lying. Love Knives Out so much. We get seven, seven friends, words, seven friends are throwing a 1920s theme party where it's all pretend until one of them is murdered. So we get a locked room. Somebody brought a knife to the party, it says. <laughs> They're going to have to figure out what happened. So it is Izzy and all of her friends, vintage dresses, expensive diamonds, and then somebody turns up dead. So we do get the police investigation. So it's not locked room in the sense that the whole book is a locked room mystery, but it was a tight group of people in the room when the murder happened, which is going to be the question. So the investigators arrive on the scene. They declare it being a murder and every party guest is a suspect. So it says to find the killer, everyone must undergo a grueling interrogation, all while locked in an estate where suddenly the greatest luxury is innocence. I almost said influence, is innocence. So they had me at Knives Out. You know, I am a sucker for a comp and I do love a YA thriller. So I'm very excited about it. I've heard some early fun buzz on this one and it just looks like a good time. And for no particular reason, I'm also kind of jazzed about the no pun intended 1920s vibe of it all. But I think it's because many, many years ago I was a flapper for Halloween. I've always loved that style era. So I don't know, maybe that's also getting my attention, but there you have it. The next book is The September House, and this is by Carissa Orlando. So this is full-blown horror, ghosty maybe, sounds really like it might be a step too far for me, but I'm also very, very intrigued by this book. I've heard rave reviews about it, so I'm going to try and put on my big girl brave pants and give this one a go. So it says this one, a woman is determined to stay in her dream home even after it becomes a haunted nightmare. So Margaret and her husband Hal bought this Victorian house. Everything is absolutely fantastic. They got it for a really, really good price, which should make you question everything. And they couldn't believe it. So then they discovered the hauntings. So every September, the walls drip blood. I'm already kind of skeeved. The ghosts of former inhabitants appear and all of them are terrified of something that lurks in the basement. Most people would flee, but Margaret is not most people. So they kind of hunker down for a couple years, but then Hal can't take it anymore and he abruptly leaves. He's not returning any phone calls. Not quite sure what happened to Hal. So their daughter, Catherine, who is not aware of anything about the hauntings, comes home. I don't know how old she is. She comes home on a hunt for her dad. And it says, but to make things worse, September has just begun. And with every attempt Margaret and Catherine make at finding Hal, the hauntings grow more harrowing because there are some secrets the house needs to keep. So this definitely sounds like something that might completely freak me out, but I'm kind of intrigued. And I'm not usually a deliberate seasonal reader, but at the same time, I feel like I am gravitating towards seasonal-ish books. So this obviously would be amazing for spooky season. So on my radar for sure. The next book is a bit of a palate cleanser, I think, to <laughs> Walls That Bleed. This is called Mother Daughter Murder Night, and this is by Nina Simon. So it is, it says, nothing brings a family together like a murder next door. So a twisty debut whodunit about a grandmother, mother, daughter trio who come together as amateur sleuths to solve a murder in their coastal California town. So I have seen some early reviews on this, and I do th think this leans cozier. And some of the kind of quotes about it are Gilmore Girls, but with murder, family drama, murder mystery, lighthearted whodunit. So either way, because I do like some lighthearted whodunits, I'm definitely interested in this one. So this book follows the Rubicon women and our main grandma matriarch of the family is Lana. And she is a high powered businesswoman with lots to be proud of. She has impeccable taste, keen intelligence and an LA real estate empire that she has built. But now she finds herself trapped 300 miles north of the city, 
convalescing in a sleepy coastal town with her daughter Beth and her teenage granddaughter Jack. Lana is stuck counting otters instead of square footage. I'm like laughing at this description and hoping that boredom won't kill her before the cancer does. But then Jack is out kayaking and she stumbles upon a dead body and she quickly becomes a suspect in the homicide investigation. So the Rubicon women have to band together and their lives are thrown into chaos and they need to figure out what exactly has happened. So it says Lana will put on her wig, find the true murderer, protect her family, and prove she still has power. So I'm very much enjoying this. And of course, when I saw the Gilmore Girls comp, I'm like, oh, it's Emily and Lorelai and Rory, like out solving crimes on the heels of reading A Quiet Tenant by Clemence Michelone, where it was like, what if Luke Danes was a serial killer? So bring me back to Stars Hollow all the time, just any day of the week. I'm here for it. This one just sounds real fun. The next book I have is Rouge, and this is by Mona Awad. So I feel like she's best known for writing Bunny, which I haven't read yet because Dark Academia Disaster of 2023, 2022, but I'm going to correct in 2023. But in this book, it says a horror tinted gothic fairy tale about a lonely dress shop clerk whose mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in pursuit of youth and beauty. Can she escape her mother's fate and find a connection that is far more than skin deep? So I don't know why I do these dramatic endings to the readings. Sorry, you guys. So in this book, we're following Belle and it says for as long as she can remember, she has been obsessed with her skin and skincare videos. So she winds up going back to Southern California after her estranged mother dies and she has to deal with all of her mother's stuff, which sounds like a whole lot of stuff. And a woman appears at the funeral, a strange woman, and it says she offers a tantalizing clue about her mother's demise followed by a cryptic video about a transformative spa experience. With the help of a pair of red shoes, she is lured into a lavish culty spa to which her mother was devoted. And there Belle discovers the frightening secret behind her and her mother's obsession with the mirror and the great shimmering depths and demons that lurk on the other side of the glass. So this is pitched as Snow White meets Eyes Wide Shut, black humor, seductive horror, cult-like nature of the beauty industry and the danger of internalizing its pitiless gaze. So I'm very intrigued by this one. And again, I've heard some early good reviews on it. So sign me up. The next book is my first pre-order of the video. And this is This Is How We End Things by RJ Jacobs. So this is pitched as Riley Sager meets If We Were Villains. I feel like I've mentioned this one on here before. And that was literally all I needed to know. Again, with the word, literally all I needed to know. So psychological thriller following a cohort of grad students study, studying the psychology of lying. Campus is empty, a winter storm is blowing in, and someone is lurking in the shadows waiting for their chance to kill again. We're in Forest, North Carolina, under the instruction of enigmatic professor Joe Lyons. Five grad students are studying the tedious science behind the acts of lying, but discovering the secrets of deception isn't making any of the students more honest. Instead, it's making it easier for them to guard their own secrets and they all have something to hide. So it looks like we've got some murder. We've got some mystery. It's all the Dark Academia vibes. It's, it's coming to me when it comes out. <laughs> I'm very excited for it. But honestly, could you pair together two things I love more? If we were villains and Riley Sager, guys, come on. You know I'm all over this one. Okay, next up, let's dig a little bit deeper into Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. So this is serial killer vibes inspired by Ted Bundy, but the focus is on the victims is how I'm getting the, the spiel on this one. So Gare from Gare Indeed Reads, who you know I love his Instagram, and then he is also one of the co-hosts of the Killing the Tea podcast, had an arc of this and has been raving about it, I want to say for months, and all my FOMO just bubbled over. So this is... January 1978, A Night of Promise. A serial killer's escape in Aspen, Colorado couldn't be further from the minds of the busy young women at the top sorority on Florida State University's campus in Tallahassee. So here's our Bundy. So we have our sorority president. She spends her Saturday night glued to her desk, cradling her textbook like a pillow. Startled awake at 3 a.m. by a strange sound, she makes the fateful decision to investigate. What she finds outside her bedroom door is a scene of implausible violence, two of her sisters dead, two others maimed. The final in the murderous spree of the man the papers will soon dub the quote, all-American sex killer. But Pamela doesn't know this yet. 
So of course the Tallahassee murders make front page news and four years earlier, a girl named Ruth had disappeared from a state park in Seattle in broad daylight and it destroyed her roommate and her best friend, Tina. So now Tina and Pamela are both two women asking questions, looking for answers that nobody wants to give the answers to. And how did a serial killer from the Pacific Northwest set his sights on a sorority house in Florida? So it says, taggling between those nightmarish days in 1978 and a letter that brings Pamela and Tina together in the present, the truth is revealed along with a portrait of the extraordinary women who saw past the media's glorification of the Kennedy of killers for who he really was. So I, this always sounds messed up. I do enjoy a serial killer story. I'm very curious about how Ted Bundy is woven into this. And I love the idea of not focusing on the serial killer, but focusing on the victims and focusing on her friends who are determined to find the truth. So like I said, I've heard nothing but absolutely fantastic things about this book. And I am in the midst of reading something else right now, but this is a thousand percent next on my list. So stay tuned here, stay tuned on my Instagram. I will be talking about this one for sure. The next book I have is Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter, and this is my next pre-order. So this is One Body, Six Experts. Can you solve the case before they do? So we have a mystery from December 2003, a murder that was never solved. And then we have a true crime streaming series called Infamous that is trying to find the answers to the case and figure out what actually happened. So this says, a wholly immersive thriller like none you've ever seen before written as the teleplay of a true crime documentary it has the reader puzzling away reviewing photos maps coroner's reports and other evidence as they read multi-narrator book well audiobook but multi-narrator story can you tell who's lying because we get the different perspectives so in 2003 luke Ryder, who was the stepfather of a now acclaimed filmmaker named guy howard was found dead in the garden of their suburban family home so at the time of the murder the family was home, but they all swear they saw nothing. And despite a high profile police investigation and endless media attention, the suspect or no suspect, excuse me, no suspect was ever charged. So they're re-examining the evidence. I guess we get to see the evidence. I mean, obviously it's fiction, but you know what I mean? This may like totally reminds me of Night Film by Marisha Pessel, where you had all of that mixed media in there. I'm very intrigued. Like I said, I have already pre-ordered this one. It's funny, it says like it's her American debut as if we don't have access to her British crime novels. I definitely have one over here. So I'm excited for this. But again, saw a lot of very interesting pre-buzz on this, but the entire concept of how this book is written a thousand percent grabbed all the attention that I have. So stay tuned. Next up is Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison. So if you guys have been here for a while, you might remember I read Cackle a couple years ago, which I absolutely loved. And I am remiss on picking up more Rachel Harrison. And with the exception of this book, which has not yet come out, I'm embarrassed to say I actually own her other books, so I have no excuse for why I haven't read them yet. But in this one, it says a cynical 20 something must confront her unconventional family's dark secrets. So another horror novel, and it says, nobody has a normal family, but Vesper writes is truly something else. Vesper left home at 18 and never looked back, mostly because she was told that leaving the staunchy religious community she grew up in meant she couldn't return. But then an envelope arrives at her doorstep. So she is invited back for the wedding of her beloved cousin, Rosie, and it's going to be hosted at the family farm. So she kind of makes that reluctant return home, which you know is one of my favorite tropes. And you know, is this an olive branch? Is this a trap? She's not quite sure, but she winds up going. And it says, even if it means reuniting with her mother, Constance, a former horror film star and forever ice queen. When Vesper's homecoming exhumes a terrifying secret, she's forced to reckon with her family's beliefs and her own crisis of faith. Deliciously sinister. And it says it explores the way family ties can bind us as we struggle to find our own way in the world. So I'm very intrigued. I love the reluctant return home. I'm very curious about her mom being a horror movie star and I loved Cackle. So definitely on my list. She is definitely a writer I need to read more from. The next book I have is the other book of the month of selection that I picked, and this is The Stranger Upstairs. And this is by Lisa M. Matlin. So in this one, it says a gruesome history. I love a blurb on the back. A gruesome history, a hostile neighborhood, a new owner with a shocking secret. Welcome to Blackwood House. I love everything about the neighborhoods that are messed up. So it says most people wouldn't buy an infamous murder house to renovate for fun, but Sarah Slade is not most people. 
So it's kind of like the September house. So she buys this gorgeous Victorian house in the community of her dreams. She gets a killer deal on it because someone was murdered in the house. So Sarah is a therapist. She's a self-help writer. She thinks this is going to be the perfect distraction that she needs from her failing marriage. It's going to make for some great blog content. And it says a good th it's a good thing that nobody knows that Sarah's past is as tainted as the blood stain on her bedroom floor. I love that. I love that so much. So it says renovations become a nightmare. And though the builders attempt to cover up Blackwood's horrifying past, a series of bizarre accidents, threatening notes, and unexplained footsteps in the attic only confirm for Sarah what the rest of the town already knows. Something is very wrong in that house. So this gives me a little bit of a vibe of Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, which you know is one of my favorite books also. And again, spooky season, haunted house, I worked in commercial real estate, but I've always just sort of like I've done construction and all of that. So I've always had an affection for like the construction design part of things. And that intrigues me. And also just the haunting and what's her secret that's as dark as the blood stain on the on her floor. Very, 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 very excited about this one and very grateful to have it. So again, perfect for spooky season. Stay tuned. The next book I have is The Christmas Orphans Club, and this is by Becca Freeman. So she is one of the co-hosts of the Bad on Paper podcast. I actually have an e-arc of this, which I have not gotten to yet. Stay tuned. So in this one, it's a holiday rom-com about four friends in New York City who hold on to their unconventional Christmas traditions even when their paths diverge. But the changes they fear might be exactly what they need. So we have two best friends, Hannah and Finn, who've spent every Christmas together since college. Neither has anywhere else to go. Hannah's parents have died and Finn's disowned him when he came out. So their tradition of an offbeat holiday adventure only grows more outrageous with time. When the pair starts their adult lives in New York City, they add stylish Priya and mysterious Theo to the group, solidifying a found family and a sense of belonging that they've always craved. So Finn might be moving to California, so this might be their last Christmas together in New York. So Hannah's afraid of, lo of like losing her found family and everyone's kind of struggling with some different things. And I'm reading this through one half eye because I don't want to know too much about it. So my understanding is this has definitely got rom-com. There's going to be some weightiness to it. I suspect Hannah's loss is probably going to have an overarching grief to it. And I think also, you know, the potential loss of her friend group and her found family. So I've heard some great pre-buzz about this one as well. And it says, this Christmas, the changes these friends fear might be exactly what they need. So very exciting. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the Bad on Paper podcast. The other co-host, Olivia Mentor, also just got a book deal. And I just get so giddy about that. It just makes me so happy. Like I know these people and I don't know these people, but so excited and proud. And as an aspiring author, it just gets me really excited. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Another... I guess palette cleanser to the dark and messed up books I just talked about. It should be great. It should be great. And then the last book I have is also my last pre-order of the month. So I know I did reference this in another book. This actually comes out in September in the UK, comes out in October in the US. I'm operating off my pre-order pub list for this one. So this is like a little bit of a sneak peek. So in this one, it's a novella, and we have an American art student in London is invited to join a classmate for the holidays at, St at Starvewood Hall, her family's Cotswold Manor House. But behind the holly and pine bows, secrets are about to unravel, revealing the seemingly charming English village's grim history. So Ashley is an American student studying in London for her junior year, and she winds up going to her friend Emma's house for the holidays. So she meets their family, and she also meets Emma's brother, Adam, who is aloof and handsome, the handsome and aloof brother. And it says, but Adam is being investigated by the local police over the recent brutal slaying of a girl from the village, and there's a mysterious stranger who haunts the woodland path between Starwood Hall and the local pub. So Ashley is like, what is happening here? Am I in a romance? Am I in a murder mystery novel? Like what is actually happening? Is this a gothic tale? I am completely freaked out. So we have dual timelines of 1989 and present day. We have diary entries and we figure out what exactly went down that terrible, horrible week. And I can't wait. You guys know Peter Swanson is one of my most favorite authors ever. And nobody does the dark and messed up like Peter Swanson does. So. I don't know if I'm going to wait till Christmas to read this one. I might be too giddy to get on top of it. But again, I'll let you know when I do. 
So those are all the books that I'm so excited about for September. I know I've missed some, so let me know you guys which ones you're super excited about. And thank you again so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. You guys, don't forget, you can get your first book for $9.99 using the code CIDER. So whether you're interested in one of these books or one of the other amazing selections on the list, definitely go check them out. All the details, as always, are listed below. And I will keep you guys posted as I read these books and let you know all of my thoughts on them. So thanks to you guys so much for being here. Thanks for hanging out for a bit today. And I will see you in the next video when that happens. So take care, everybody. Bye.